So this is the extent of my injury. It's uh Oh, it already hurts. Good morning. I'm all packed up, ready to go. It's pretty heavy. All the food in there. I have like five days of food for two more days, <laughs> one more night out. But um, I'm gonna go get water and throw out my trash right now. And we have like seven miles for the next water source, so. It's a little, little dry area. It's one of those sections where there's water everywhere but you have to really work for it if you want it. So it's a choice of do you want to carry all that water or do you want to go get the water? Sometimes carrying is easier. It's definitely simpler and more reliable, but let's get some water and uh, we'll get going. So leaving the road on Far Alp, there was one comment that was saying from Hawk Mountain to like old Franklin Ford or something like that is one of the tougher sections and uh, it's gonna be like five or seven more miles of this. So far it's been okay, but uh, <laughs> so many bugs now. But uh, I think it's gonna be a slow progress morning, but we'll see if it's true. But I think in this instance, it's gonna be accurate because she was more concise with their report. For a little while, I won't walk and vlog because all you'll see is me peeling spider webs off my face. But uh, today it's actually, it's like 17 and a half miles and 2400 feet elevation gain or something like that but the bulk of it would be the big climb that's right here actually so it's only like 1200 feet so it's funny how these days 1200 feet is a huge climb but it used to not be <laughs> it was like a normal climb before but uh yeah that's just the day kind of difficult just because it's humid really buggy i might pull out my head net actually I just hope the sun stays away today so it's not so hot. Look what I've got on. My ears are still exposed. Or rather, like, a bug could land on it and bite my ear. But I treated this thing with permethrin so it should keep them away. Whew, it was too much for me. I had to do it. The downside with the head net is if it's ever sunny at all, the head net heats up and then the whole inside just gets super hot. So hopefully, no sun. Here we are at Dan's Pulpit. It's a pretty nice overlook actually. Really nice. There were reports of a copperhead and a timber rattler a few days ago. Probably long gone. They're very scared of me, so they don't hang out long. Let's uh, try to get close. Oh yeah, it's really angled up there. Beautiful views though, huh? Look at all those farms. Out west, they use those watering wheel things, and I always thought they don't use a good portion of land because they just have circles everywhere so the corners aren't used up here everything's used except where the trees are and probably where rocks are but it's pretty much stand on the rock Scan for a white blaze there and then look down and see which way you should go. I guess I'll just go this way and then just go straight up and then repeat over and over. From here I thought the trail was going to go that way but I scanned for a white blaze and there's a tree over there so we go that way. Looks like it might connect but you always have to keep an eye out for the white blazes because sometimes it looks like that could be the trail because the vegetation is kind of cleared and there, it actually looks like there's steps like flat rock, flat rock but it's this way
I just realized, I thought it was going to go straight that way, but there is a huge drop right there. But there's a blaze there, and off on the left there's a blaze there. So he wants you to zigzag around, go, there's another blaze there, go around the tree, and then go. It's quite odd, after long stretches of rocks like that, you'll hit the, these perfect trails. It's like the trail maintainers felt sorry for you and they couldn't do anything about the big rocks. So over here they just made a super nice easy trail but we need these because on these smooth sections i my theory is just go as fast as you can just to make up some time so your average isn't so bad because the rocks slow you down so much but let's put this away and get to moving before the next stretch of rock shows up just a common garter snake pretty though but nothing exciting small small little guy you can tell how small he is by the size of the leaves just leaving a the shelter there I took a long break um, I was tired and hot but also I had some internet service there's pretty much internet service everywhere around here but um, I had to book a place that I'm staying at Palmerton I have a viewer who's gonna basically help me out so I'm going I guess down to Allentown. I didn't realize he lived that far down when I took up on his offer, but uh, I already did. So, so he's gonna drive me, uh, he's gonna pick me up at Palmerton and take me down there. And then uh, the plan right now is I'm gonna pseudo slack pack one day. And then, so I'm gonna stay two nights at the hotel. So I, I want to book a place. Um, the closest places were quite expensive. So <laughs> unfortunately I booked a place and a little further away from his house um he said it was okay but it was way more expensive for those other two places near his place uh but yeah that's what i did and it took me a while because i had to figure everything out uh decide where to stay things like that so for now let's um let's go down the trail from the shelter there's a blue blaze that goes to the spring and then the spring is actually right by the trail so I'm just gonna go down the trail and then backtrack to the spring and then get back because if I took that blue trail down to the water it's just so tempting right to just hop on the trail or walk all the way back to the shelter and then go so I'm just gonna do this hopefully it's not too bad a walk they said it was down <laughs> wish me luck well the side trail to the water wasn't too bad and the water is flowing quite well there's a pipe spring there, so I haven't rinsed off my face. If I have water all over me. Now to get back on trail and do 10 more miles. Mm, he's off in the bush. Uh, I saw the yeah, I saw the yellow hummer. I was like, oh no, he oh, drove all the way out here. Yeah, it was yeah, this is like 54 minutes from my house. That's still so far. Out, oh, no problem. Yo, just... I had to get you a grill. 2.0 yeah. grilled cheese, right? <laughs> Tony from Random Adventures 2.0. Yeah, I didn't get the grilled oh, cheese because yeah. uh, the day he would have set up, it was raining oh, all God. day. And now he's going to set been? up. Good, good. <sighs> well, well let's... Tell you, that was hot yeah. one yesterday. Oh, it, it was. Today, it was too. To Man, that's a great way to do it. I but... thought I was going to miss out on uh, Tony's grilled Juke. cheese 2.0. <laughs> Cool. He said he was getting yeah, better and better. Cool. Looks good, yeah. Look how he's using the butter. He was using it vertically like before, but now he's got it laid sideways. Just no hesitation butter use. <laughs> right now. I'm just yeah. laying it on. <laughs> laying it on. It's uh, easier than spreading it. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll figure it out. Just might as well just cut some slices and stick it inside too. Right. Hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> it might slide off. Some, uh, <laughs> nice. Looking forward. Why wow, you got six of them? Whoa! Yeah, just in case. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So, so, yeah. I went over seven hundred yesterday. I'm so excited. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think once he gets such his channel to not kids, made for kids. <laughs> you like more? I'm gonna figure it out. Oh man, Tony. Yeah, these are great. Yeah, those, those, they're, they're not think, good. They're cooked out just perfectly. Mm -hmm. Did cheese melt? No. Yeah, oh, it was, it was, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
promise me how many calories you think there's in this? A uh, couple. Just a couple. couple. Yeah. Just a couple. Butter and cheese. The butter right. and the cheese alone is probably yeah. 500. And I'm thinking that to run to somewhere to get some, I think that I don't know where right, we'll we'll more. Hmm? There's still three more. Oh, yeah, there's three people here, too. So if you guys want another one. Could be three? Nope. I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody. I'll put the grill away, so I'll just set the table up. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm planning on doing, anyhow. Yeah. Alright. I can oblige. I'll go for another one. Yeah. Me too. Let me shut my camera off though. Does anybody want any more butter? <laughs> You know that. That was a fun time hanging out with Tony again. I thought I wouldn't see him again. But he came out here and he intercepted us just perfectly and he made us grilled cheeses and they were delicious. I did take my lactase with them, but whew, I've been hiking uh, away really quickly um, just because the it's quite cool right now. While we were sitting there, it cooled down considerably and there's supposed to be rain starting around seven tonight. So I'm trying to go eight miles to a shelter and hopefully the rain doesn't start until after I set up and eat and get everything put away. So I gotta, I gotta get moseying. It was really nice too, cause while we were there, other hikers showed up. So I got to talk to other hikers that uh, never met before. And there was one hiker that passed us a couple times named Lightfoot. It was really nice talking to him. 20 year old kid walking around, no trekking poles, <laughs> big miles. Yeah, that was pretty funny, but okay, eight miles to go, and then we'll be there. And Tony, thanks again for the grilled cheese and the trail magic. Two Mountain Dews. <laughs> I think that's gonna fuel me. And I think the grilled cheese is, I was guessing it's like 500 calories each, but I think it's gonna be good enough for the rest of the day too, till dinner, we'll see. But thank you again, and hope everything goes well with you. And uh, Okay, I'm gonna get going. I think the road is coming up and I see a building there. The chances are it is the lodge and I see kind of like a wall one and trail. And that's where I think Thunderhead Lodge or something like that. That's where the uh, tap is. So I'm gonna get some water. I totally forgot to get water when I was at 20. I was thinking I should. I'm gonna go uh, cut across so I don't have to go to the road and walk. Um, I think this is it. I'm gonna check my phone. Uh, I'm gonna start walking this way, but I'm gonna check my phone as I go. So I don't want to just walk up to some random guy's backyard. Right at the corner. So it's the closest corner to the trail, so that's really nice. Thank you so much Thunderhead Lodge for letting hikers come fill up the water there. Because there isn't a lot of water along this section of trail. And thank you for having this little section of trail so we don't have to do a road walk with the crazy cars but um yeah someday i will come drive the at and we'll come inside and have something to eat for now though i just had trail magic and i gotta get to camp so i can't really come in and eat so thank you again here's the back view of thunderhead lodge and the water is right there basically easy access um i thought there was something else was water but i don't know what it is They're like weird taps there but thank you again so much. Thanks for letting hikers get water from you. There's still more of these mountain laurels that are just kind of popping open little by little. And every now and then you get batches of flowers. But overall, I haven't had too many. Tina, I just talked to Tina and she said that where she is, she's about 120 miles or something like that, 130 miles, Miami. She said they're all in full bloom. So I missed it by a week and a half, a week. She's actually in Carlisle today, which is not that far. I feel like I was just in Carlisle, but she says all the mountain laurels are in full bloom near her. Lucky her. I get flowers here and there though, and they're quite beautiful. So I appreciate that one. Like that one looks nice. That's a really pretty one. These are quite pretty. I don't know if I filmed these before. Oh yeah, I have filmed them. They're basically the blueberry bushes, I think. It just looked different right here. The, the petals are more laid back. But look at all the little black dots. Get some pictures here. So just now I was taking some pictures. There were some uh, mountain laurel flowers that were just over the trail. So you can kind of see the trail. I think it looked beautiful because the trail's blurred, flowers in focus. And I had to hold my camera up and use the display because it was a high angle. 
and I was trying to manually focus it in and uh, I was like why isn't this focusing it was like it kept going past and forward past and forward and I was like oh yeah I'm trying to look at the screen with it right here so I did this and I finally got it in focus <laughs> but I was like back and forth back and forth like where's the focus point <sighs> Sometimes I wonder, should I have like reading glasses on me? That way I could see the screen better and uh, maybe I'll take better pictures if I have reading glasses on me and I could see what I'm taking pictures of. Do you see it? From here it looks like fully blue mountain laurel flowers everywhere. It looks pretty deep. There's a butterfly. Oh my goodness, this is it. This is what we've been waiting for folks. Oh, I gotta get that butterfly. Oh, they're so fast. But uh, yeah, whoa, most of our are in bloom. Beautiful. This is what I've been waiting for. Wow. And it's pretty fresh. Wow. Look at that. Look how beautiful that looks. There's still many that haven't opened up, but from far away, you could just see the white. And then the pink ring in the middle. Oh, um, wow, that's uh, Wow, finally get to see them. So beautiful, there's so many flowers here. I'd almost given up on whether or not I was gonna see Mount Laurel in full bloom. Keep seeing them in partial bloom, but I got really lucky there. That thing was beautiful. I can't believe Tina's getting to walk past a whole bunch of those, but that thing was really nice. I was very happy and it slowed me down quite a bit. Well, I hope you enjoy some of the footage. I took quite a few different ones just because I don't know if I'll ever see mountain laurels in bloom like that again. Yeah, I just love how the, they're white and what was it? They're anthers, <laughs> touch the petals. Uh, I, I looked it up, I already forgot. But it's basically like the little male parts and the tips touch the white petals and right where the red line is. It's quite unique. I think it's beautiful more of them here more of them bloomed now now of course I always want to outdo myself now I want to catch one of these like really dark blue butterflies landing on one they seem to like them um, the one I saw flew away really quickly though before I can get the camera out I'm gonna get one this morning the climb itself was you know just another climb it's a little tough but soon after the climb the rock started and it was just pretty much non-stop until the shelter and after that we were on this kind of road thing for a while and then we saw Tony two miles later but ever since then too it's been this road thing and it's been pretty nice although I just jinxed myself by seeing that <laughs> I think but so far it's been pretty nice but between uh, that uh, Eckhart shelter and the next shelter whew, Give yourself some extra time there. It is tough and takes forever. And Lazarus broke one of his trekking poles in that section. <laughs> he fell too, actually. But fortunately, he just kind of looks like he just scraped his leg a little bit and bruised his knee. But overall, he's okay. But he's uh, managed to get his trekking pole working okay because it's basically one of these telescoping types. And it broke higher up, so he slid the second unit has to break because I bet it broke exactly where the top of the second unit was and with some tape it seems to be holding up so he's gonna try it um <laughs> it's not a hundred percent so he's gonna go home soon so hopefully he picks up a new set and doesn't keep using that because that doesn't seem very reliable your uh health and staying injury free is worth a couple hundred bucks for another nice new set of reliable trekking poles but yeah it's pretty tough so be careful out there. There's a campsite with uh, what looks like it's like, gonna be a nice view. So I thought I'd go check it out. Nice campsite though. Oh yeah, really nice view. It's a narrow view, but it's a nice view. It's rolling farms everywhere. It's quite pretty and the trees blowing in the wind. That's a good one. Nice one. Well, I just realized it's June 1st today. So happy June first or happy June 8th everyone <laughs> I didn't realize it was June already just you know hiking along and Tina's gonna be in Carlisle today which 
to me is so weird. Like I said before, it felt like it was just a little while ago that I was there. In fact, she's gonna get ahead of my videos because all my videos are one week delayed. So at, point, at some point, she's gonna be way past my videos. Whew, she's gonna catch up quickly. Here's this nice trail. As of right now, we have 4.3 miles to go and it's just a tad over four o'clock. So I still think six o'clock ETA, as long as the trail stays like this, I think I can get there before six. You just never know what's gonna happen around here though. There's a baked knob coming up and uh, we'll spend a couple minutes there, but I hope the trail going up to there isn't so bad. Sometimes for day hikes I found, it seems like they just make the trail tougher to give the day hikers a little bit of a challenge or something, not make it too easy to get to the viewpoint. They could maybe keep away all the graffiti people then because they tend to be lazy and they stick with places that are easy to get to. It must be a nice breeze up there. That crow is very early going. But we are coming up against power line views. It's always nice having these clear cuts and get some views. And look at this Mount Laurel bush. Super colorful. I guess sun's good for it. This one's mostly bloomed, really pinkish. Whoa, on the other side of it, it's almost entirely bloomed. So nice. And it's like it's pinker and pinker as you go further around. Isn't that weird? I'm baking in the sun, but I'm gonna stop and take some pictures because these are so pink and so thick. I know I'm standing underneath the power lines, but there's this nice breeze coming through. Taking the pictures of those flowers, I was just cooking and sweating like crazy. I had this breeze suddenly. I feel so good. I'm so wet. Yeah, soaking wet. What's funny is these power lines are actually really nice because I mentioned before, they're clear cut so you get some views, but you get the contrast of the open views and then maybe like 20 feet away, darkness. The black tunnel. The first two miles out of that road was pretty nice, but only two miles. <laughs> now it's back to this. Let's see how far this goes. Hopefully it doesn't go four miles. Whew. Big boulder field. Okay. Let's get going before the thunderstorms come. The trail continues that way, but at least it takes us to a nice viewpoint. Let's go over there for a second. It's not too far. <sighs> there's a tough one. It's always fun when there's blazes really close together because we're trying to keep you on this uh, trail. But it's basically this rocky climb. <sighs> and once we're over this, I don't know how much further it's going to go. Boy. I only had like three miles to go. But, uh, I'm actually glad I'm doing this now because uh, there's some people staying in a hostel behind me. They're approximately three miles behind me and then they're going to start in the morning, but there's supposed to be thunderstorms in the morning. And uh, this would be no fun in a thunderstorm with wet rocks. What an amazing view. Yeah, with all these rocks wet, that would not be fun. And uh, there are a lot of parts that are just really inclined. Not be fun in a way. Okay. I'm gonna put this away and try to get some speed going and uh, not hurt myself. So that section behind me was called the knife edge and it's just huge boulder scrambles around over the very top of the ridge. I feel sorry for people to hike in it tomorrow in the rain but after that it, the rocks are still bad. I actually took a tumble a little further back because uh, I stepped on a rock and I thought it was gonna be solid but it rocked and it just gave out under me and I just fell over to my side fortunately nothing's hurt nothing's broken but scraped the side of my shoe pretty hard 
and uh, hurt it a little bit. We'll see how it feels later. And just over and over, I'm bashing the left side of my foot in the rocks as well. Pretty much bashing my feet, all parts of my feet into rocks. <laughs> uh, still going, we got 2.8 miles to go. It's already five o'clock, it's slow going. I thought I was gonna get there at six, but I think I might get there at 6.30 at this rate. Maybe seven. <laughs> I hope things improve quickly, but I don't think they will. All right. We're moving up. I gotta keep focusing. Another beautiful viewpoint. This is nice and clear. Oh boy. That breeze is so nice. Good news is the wind's coming from in front of me. I don't see any rain yet. Yep, I missed the rain. It's, I'm 0.7 away from the shelter. I'm like 0.2 away from this big knob. And then we go down a little up, but 0.7 away, it started raining. So I guess I should have left like 20 minutes earlier. Oops, oh well, but uh, hopefully it doesn't start getting really windy or pouring until I get to the shelter. I'm just gonna go straight into the shelter and then um, just wait it out until the rain stops and set up my tent, I think. And we'll see how many people are there. It's supposed to be a small old shelter. And I think the, the old ones always are very mousy, so I don't know. <sighs> of course, it rained hard for a little bit and it kind of slowed down, but I only have probably 0.4 miles to go, but it's, uh, it's a hard four miles. I fell hard, I landed right on my hip. <sighs> if I did that probably in the beginning of my hike, I would have broken it or something, but fortunately it's tough enough. That's gonna hurt. And I also bashed my shin, wedged it against a rock. Fortunately, I hit the, like the anterior muscle. I didn't hit the shin itself, so nothing probably broke or chipped, but it's bleeding now, oddly enough. Uh, not a lot, but uh, there's another huge boulder field across here. And uh, the rock right in front of me is at an angle and it's, it looks very slippery. So I'm trying to figure out a good way to get through this field here. Everything is so slippery. It's, it's super tough, tough going. I'm gonna put this away and I'll show you the trail. Yeah, there's my bloody shin. Uh, this rock right here, I can't really step on it looks it's only slightly angled but it looks slippery and i will just go all the way down maybe i could slide down to those other rocks but pretty much have a big boulder field i need to get through this though before it rains again i put my umbrella away because i just couldn't walk with the umbrella i just got to get through this just a few a few tenths of a mile to go and it just got extremely difficult look what i found stuck on some thorny plants there was a hiker in front of me who was wearing one when he showed up at Trail Magic. His name was Bulldozer, and I think he's gonna stay at the shelter here. So I'm gonna bring it and uh, reunite it with him. I think it's his though. So this is the extent of my injury. It's, uh... oh, it already hurts. <sighs> the whole area is tender. I think it's gonna be a quite a nasty bruise up to here down lower but at least the bone survived the muscle took the hit with the rock bones all good oh, I was gonna wash it out somehow I was gonna use my antibacterial wipes and then um, I don't know how you could put band-aids on it <laughs> it's just it's always like this when I hurt my legs it's you need a big old thing little things don't work but uh, first things first I gotta Get all the dirt off my legs and I uh, clean clean myself off first this is how I've been sleeping lately I put my backpack down and I used the bag liner sleeping bag liner that I had and I just cover everything so everything's soft and I prop my legs up on there but I want to show you these these are two leaves so far I've taken three leaves on the entire through hike and I'm gonna take two right now um, and you're supposed to take two when you have like a bad headache right away and my hip is not killing me but it is extremely painful 
and I can't even sit straight because my left butt hurts. And uh, when I stood up to go outside there, my back is kind of spasming as well. I think I yanked it really hard when I fell. Plus my shin is gonna hurt. So I'm gonna take two because um, I wanna keep the inflammation down from whatever injury my body has incurred. And also so I can sleep well because I have a feeling it's gonna be a painful night. So I think I have to take two. It's pretty sore. Oh, not a good day. Yeah, not the best day. My left hip, if I sit up straight, the left hip hurts. So I've been leaning to my right. And maybe that's also what's making my back ache. Because the whole time I've been sitting here, I've been leaning to my right. And it's not good. So tomorrow I only have like 8.4, I think, to the parking lot. Where someone was going to pick me up and take me down um, to near his place. And I'm going to stay at a hotel tonight. He offered to slack pack me tomorrow and uh, it was it was going to be from Palmerton to Wind Gap, which is 20 miles. And I was like, I don't think I could do it. Um, well, I mean, not tomorrow, the next day, but I don't think I could do it. If the rocks are as bad as like today, 20 miles would be a, an entirely full day. And I'd probably be unhappy not having recorded as much as I would have liked. So I asked him if I could slack pack just 12 miles because that's the uh, next road, <laughs> less than 20. And he said it was good, but um, I'm going to see how I feel tomorrow because my hip hurts. I was walking off to go pee and just each step was achy. So I might zero again tomorrow. I know I just took another a zero just a few days ago, but um, this was unexpected and I don't want to be too achy um, working through all these rocks, so kind of it's I don't know. I might I don't know. Maybe I'll do the slack pack 12 miles. Um, although my slack pack would be all my gear minus my food, <laughs> so it's not like a slack pack that most people do. Um, because I want to be able to hike the AT with my pack and all my stuff in it. So um, the food though is extra. I'll just leave that behind and. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll do it two days from now. We'll see. Well, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope the blood didn't gross some people out. <laughs> and uh, you all have a good night, and you be careful out there. It's slippery when wet.